Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me in the video today. As I'm sure many of you have noticed, it's been quite a while since I've posted any updates on the Octo Contra Alto or Octo Contra Bass Clarinet projects. As I mentioned in one of my last videos on the Octo Contra Alto Clarinet, unfortunately the first prototype of the Octo Contra Bass Clarinet was not viable because the tone holes were simply too small to produce a full and resonant sound. Also, the instrument was very sluggish and very stuffy, making it not a very practical demonstration of the octo contra bass clarinet concept. I've since realized that the octo contra alto also suffers the same problem to some extent. The tone holes are simply too small to produce a full and resonant sound, and also the result is that the instrument is very stuffy and hard to play, making it not a very practical instrument. Now, I've tried to think of a lot of solutions to this problem, but unfortunately the only one that would really be viable would be to completely redesign both instruments from the ground up. And unfortunately, few if any parts could be reused from the original prototypes. So this has been a very daunting challenge. It was already a very big challenge to try and build both of these prototypes. And now I would just have to start over again. So after thinking about it for a long time, I've decided that the goal of building an octo contra bass clarinet is worth it. So I'm excited to announce that I have started working on the second prototype of the octo contra bass clarinet. Now this time I'm going to do a lot of things differently and I'm going to be using a lot of concepts that are very new to the world of clarinets. I invite you to come and see some of the progress that I've made so far on the instrument. And here it is, the newest octo contra bass clarinet prototype. Obviously this isn't very impressive. This is just a tube with a mouthpiece, and it isn't even the final form that the instrument will take. But this very simple prototype shows off a few of the improvements that I've already made. To start, the bore of this instrument is now only 35 millimeters, which is five millimeters smaller than the original prototype. My tests have shown that while the smaller bore isn't quite as loud and resonant, it does respond a lot better, and it makes this instrument a lot more practical to play. Secondly, I've also completely redesigned the mouthpiece. While I did initially design a custom octo contra bass clarinet mouthpiece, I have since learned a lot more about mouthpiece design, and I've implemented everything I've learned into the design of this mouthpiece. With the design improvements that I've made, it now plays much better. To give you a demonstration, I'm going to be playing what is essentially the low C of the octo contra bass clarinet, which will be the lowest note of the instrument once completed. To finish off, I do have a bell on the end of the instrument, which is simply a bass clarinet bell. However, this is exactly what was used on the original octo contra bass clarinet. So I think it'll be a good demonstration of the concept. Now, before I give a sound sample of the instrument, I just want to ask that you use the best headphones or speakers that you have available to you to listen to the instrument. For the recording, I'm going to be using the best microphone I have. It's still not great, but it's probably better than the microphone in my phone. Uh, so hopefully it'll give you a better idea of what the instrument actually sounds like in person. I've been told that my videos sound a lot like a jackhammer when I play the low notes, but in reality, the instrument sounds a lot more full and resonant in person. And unfortunately, a lot of that doesn't come through the, uh, the video, but good headphones or good speakers definitely help. So without further ado, here's the first test of the instrument. With that demonstration, I think it can be safely said that the improvements made to the bore and the mouthpiece have definitely helped the response and resonance of this instrument. But now comes the question of key work. Key work was the biggest challenge of the original prototypes. Making keys from scratch is very difficult and even reusing keys and modifying them like I did on both prototypes was still a very labor intensive task. So after thinking about this for a very long time, I thought, what if I completely threw the concept of traditional key work out the window? If you think about modern cars, instead of linkages and cables, many modern cars use things known as solenoid. A solenoid is a device that takes electrical power and converts it into a back and forth motion. So what if you could use solenoids 
to power keys. And that's exactly what this is. So this is an electromechanical key. The solenoid is right here, and the power is fed through these cables. When the power is running, a little electromagnet pulls this steel plunger down, which in turn causes this pad cup to go down and seal this tone hole. So when I run power through these cables, it closes the pad cup. And this can simply be controlled with a button that simulates the look and feel of a traditional clarinet key. So with this setup, I can just make 22 or so of these solenoids, which are very easy to make. You just have a standard off-the-shelf solenoid, a 3D printed part, a pad cup that can easily be purchased, a pad, and a piece of PVC fitting. Very easy to make. Most of the parts are standard off the shelf, and I can use the same sign for every single tone hole on the instrument with the exception of the register mats. So once I have that, it's simply a matter of building a control interface, which would just be most likely clarinet keys or possibly alto clarinet keys with contacts that open and close circuits to control a microcontroller, which then controls the opening and closing of all the tone holes. So this would greatly simplify the process of building this instrument, and it would allow for many other advantages. For example, with a simple press of the button or a reprogramming of the microcontroller, you can transpose the instrument. So if you were to say finger an E, the microcontroller would play an E flat. So you could not only have an octo contrabass clarinet in the key of B flat, but also A or G. And this can be done very easily because it's very easy to reprogram a microcontroller. So after thinking about this, I've decided this is definitely the way I want to go for this prototype of the octo contrabass. So I've since ordered some parts to make this happen. Now the question is though, will this concept work on such a large instrument? Well, here's a test to see how some of the lower notes will sound with these electromechanical keys. Now, as I'm sure you could hear from that test, there were a few small problems with the concept. For example, this tiny little solenoid doesn't quite have enough stroke to pull the pad cup up high enough to make it sound nice and resonant. And it's also not strong enough really to provide enough force to fully seal the tone hole. But I think it at least shows that the concept is viable. I've since ordered some better solenoids, but unfortunately they haven't arrived yet. So I haven't been able to test them. But if my math is correct, they should be more than strong enough to properly close the pad cup and produce a seal, uh, even if there's 22 of them working together to seal the instrument when playing a low C. So while there are definitely a lot of things to work out, I think that this concept is viable and it is the way I'm gonna be moving forward with the rest of the instrument. Hopefully it should solve my problem of building keywork. Thank you everyone for watching the video. I apologize for the delay in Octo Contra clarinet videos, and I'm sure many of you have wondered if I've given up on the project. While the project overall has been very tough and very challenging, I definitely do not want to give up, even though it's taking me quite a bit longer to come up with a viable design than I would have hoped. I do want to stick with the project and finish it, even if it takes years and years to complete. And I do know it's frustrating waiting months and months for a video wondering if I've given up. But I want to say that I am very dedicated to this project and I really appreciate all your support uh, that I received. Just a, a positive comment saying, great video, I love this project, look forward to seeing more. Just makes me feel so happy. It makes me feel that the work I'm doing is inspiring you guys to maybe try your own musical instrument projects. So thanks everyone for watching. And I hope you all have a wonderful day.